I, again, I just wanted to say thank you, and I just wanted to try to do something nice for you guys in particular and to get us kind of through the, the rest of the school year. So in, in a minute, I'm going to have somebody come on who's just wants to give you some words of encouragement and a nice little surprise uh, because it's so well-deserved. And it's someone who obviously does have experience in the education space uh, in, in a very twist of a way. Our guest is here, so I'm going to have them jump on. Hey, Jeff. 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 Jeff, how are you doing? Oh my God. I'm good. How are you, Nicholas? I'm good. Thank you so much oh for God. doing this. <laughs> my pleasure. Tom, I'm like, we have somebody who has educator experience at the fifth grade. Foxworthy. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> you, you say oh educator God. experience. The people ask me what my favorite part of hosting are you smarter than a fifth grader was and i always say it was the part where they gave me the card with the answers on it because if not <laughs> that would have been the shortest show in the history of television <laughs> well spoiler we don't know the answers to the questions our students ask us as <laughs> teachers but uh obviously growing up did you have any educators in your life who kind of made an impact and just so you know all educators think we are good at comedy or not because our students tell or our students tell us that regularly but did you have any educators growing up who kind of had an impact hopefully in a positive way i i did my brother and i have lived next door to each other for 20 years i have all girls he has all girls but his middle daughter is a fourth grade teacher so i hear all about the, how much more difficult it is with the virtual learning. So if, if I made Nicholas, can I tell you a little, like a five minute story? Um, so when my girls were little, they, they wanted cats for Christmas. So my wife and I are trying to do the responsible thing and we go to the rescue place and rescue these two adolescent cats. Uh, and their names were Andrew and Sam. And so on Christmas morning, uh, Andrew kind of looked like a Siamese. Well, Andrew let the girls pick him up, put him in a stroller, put clothes on him. He was totally passive and let him do everything. But Sam, as soon as we opened the door, ran into our bedroom and he hid up under the dresser and he wouldn't come out. And he stayed there all day, stayed there all weekend. And after two weeks of this cat hiding, and I don't know what horrible had happened to him, I said to my wife one day, this is just not working out. I said, we, we, we need to take Sam back to the shelter. And so she said, well, you've got to take Jordan, our oldest daughter, who at the time was about four years old. So I put Sam in the crate, pulled him out from under the dresser. I've got Jordan in the car seat in the back and we're driving down the road. And Jordan says, where are we going? And I said, well, we're going to the shelter. I said, uh, we need to take Sam back because he's so miserable. And this four-year-old child said, but dad, if we can't love him, who can? And I sat there at the stop sign. And I'm like, dad, come it. So I made a U-turn and got back home, opened the crate. My wife's like, what are you doing? And I said, I can't let Sam go. And so for every night I would lay in the floor and I would just whisper this stupid little song. I would go, Sam Alamedy, Sam Alamedy. And finally, after about five or six nights, this cat came out from under the dresser and he let me touch him, he let me pet him. And so for a couple of years, I was the only one that could pet him. And then we moved from LA to Georgia, Sam goes with us. And when we moved, Sam, disappeared he got outside one day and he disappeared and after two weeks we were like he's gone he got eaten by a Cody or whatever and and I just had the girls and I said let's take a drive around the neighborhood well I got about a mile and a half away and I see Sam on the edge of the woods and he's skinny as a rail he hasn't eaten so I pick him up I take him home the vet's like I don't know if he's gonna make it or not and I start hand feeding him well over the course of time Sam not only let me pet him, then he let my wife pet him, and then he let my girls pet him. And Sam became the sweetest cat in the world to the point that he would sit on the kitchen counter and if you walked by, he would stick his paw out and he would tap you like, hey, you're missing a great opportunity to pet a wonderful cat here. And we ended up having Sam for 16 years and 
he was so, anytime you sat down, he was in everybody's lap. He was just the sweetest cat of all time. And I tell the story to say, you never know how something is going to turn out. And I know as a teacher, especially doing it through Zoom, it's got to be super frustrating. But you don't know what these kids are going to end up being like. Because I I, I went to a pu public school. Everybody went to work either at the Ford plant or at Delta. I grew up in a little town called Hateful, Georgia, you, or construction. I mean, it was just all blue collar jobs. But I had two teachers, two English teachers. I remember when I was like in the 10th grade, I had a girlfriend and I had no money. We didn't have much money. And I wanted to buy her a birthday present. And my English teacher said, you're a good writer and you don't know it. And there's a speech contest why don't you come in after school and, and we will work on a speech? Well, I ended up not only winning the local thing and the region thing, I finished third in the state in the speech contest. And I started learning at that age. I'm like, oh my God, I can write. I didn't know that I could write. I didn't know you could make a living. And look what I ended up doing for a living. I, I ended up being a writer. I've written 26 books. I've written TV scripts. I've, I've sold more comedy records than anybody in history. And I've written all the material. And I think back to these teachers that when I didn't even realize, realize this about myself, were breathing it into me going, you can do this. You have this skill set, And I had the confidence to at least try it. And so I'm a little bit like Sam in the human form. You know, somebody could have given up on me and I could, I could have been working construction, but I had teachers that believed in me, never knowing how, how it was gonna turn out, but they were whispering that encouragement into me. So I just want, I, I have such an admiration for teachers because um, it's not an easy job, but I think it's kind of like being a writer. You don't do it because you want to, you do it because you have to, it's who you are. Um, and so I just wanted to say, thank y'all and and i know it's tough because i hear it firsthand from my niece but but she loves it and i and i and i tell her i'm like you have no idea what you're putting in now what's going to come of that somewhere down the road you're planting seeds that aren't going to blossom you know till decades later but so when i had the opportunity to come on here and say thank you to you guys i jumped at it I mean, that's such an incredible story. I always feel bad for elementary school teachers because they have to wait like 20 years to find out if they did a good job. Yes. Teachers, we get immediate gratification when you go on. But I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> such an incredible story that an English teacher played a role in your career path where you are now. And I mean, I, that's, I had no idea. And that's so incredible to hear that. Yeah, I, and I ended up winning the contest. I got the 50 bucks and I bought my girlfriend a, a birthday present. <laughs> but, but I think that that was the first time in my life that a little light bulb went on and went, well, maybe I could be a writer. Maybe, you know, I didn't have to make my livings with, with my hands. Maybe I could, I could do something else. And so it was kind of like planting the seeds to have a dream that, I mean, nobody in my family had ever done anything creative. So there wasn't a path laid out for me. So if not for these teachers, I, I never would have tried it. And thank, thank you so much for sharing that. And again, it like reinforces and, Obviously, I appreciate you so much doing this because normally a teaching year is tough, as you know, but this year it's like we're, we're hanging on by a thread because of everything and we miss everything so much. So again, thank you so much for, for, for sharing that. Thank you so much for jumping on. But again, you just kind of reinforce everything that I think we all know that, you know, behind most successful people, you often find an educator who kind of supported them along the way. So no doubt. So yeah. thank you. I mean, give your niece a hug from all of us too, because we feel her pain. We yeah. feel pain in her suffering. But thank, again, thank you so much, Jeff. Sincerely, really appreciate it. Uh, and and it, it means so much to us. Well, and, and, and just the encouragement that you're teaching Sam's. You're teaching Sam's out there that you have no idea what they're going to turn out to be. Um, and, and in some cases, you're never going to see the results of it. But that doesn't matter. You're, you're changing somebody's life for the better just like a teacher changed mine.